This is my favorite purchase of the week. It is a Porsche Panamera GTS, yeah? Serious car, it's got a V8 engine under the bonnet. It's literally just arrived this morning. I am mega excited to show you lot this car. It sounds incredible. <laughs> we can go through this massive spec list it's got. Like, if you've never seen in and out of one of these cars, you need to stay tuned with this video because they are so impressive. Let's get on with it. Yes, this is prime YouTube content this. So it's a 2014 uh, Panamera GTS. It's actually a facelift car. The Panamera came out in 2011, I think, and then they facelifted them in 2013, 14. So this is one of the earlier uh, facelift cars. And the facelifts basically come with nicer headlights, slightly different front bumper with different fog lights in the bumper there as well and different rear lights a few subtle changes uh the panameras came with lots of different engine variants i actually daily drove a three liter diesel one a few years ago i loved that car absolutely loved it uh but this is obviously the gts which came with the 4.8 litre v8 naturally aspirated engine under the bonnet it's actually the same engine that's in the panamera turbo obviously without the turbos uh so it's naturally aspirated it sounds incredible <laughs> Uh, Panamera GTS has also came with the turbo suspension and the turbo brakes. So it's sitting slightly lower uh, than a normal Panamera and it's got the better brakes as well off the turbo. That's it, they've gone now. So yeah, the GTS basically sat in the middle of the normal Panamera and the Panamera Turbo, right? So we've got a daily driving car with massive performance. I didn't mention the horsepower by the way, 440 horsepower. It weighs about two tons. So it is a heavy car, but it's got so much going for it. Daily driving, performance, practical. We've got seats in the rear. We've got a Volvo just pulling up now. Is he coming in here? You're going in there. You're going in there. You look like you're going in there. You're after you, sir. There you go. Looks like we just had a Volvo arrive. And we've also got this Adam just arrived. Is he, um, you're going, you'll get through there, mate. Get a bus through there, meal, mate. There we go. This is supposedly the Adam S. Is that what it's called? Like, I don't know, the gangster one. It's got bowler alloy wheels, look, looking pretty cool. Might do a video on that. Let me know if you want to see a video on that. <laughs> Big boot, back seats. Let's talk about back seats. So they've sort of retained the original looks of a Porsche, yeah? So from the front end, it's got like the 911 look, yeah? Correct me if you feel like I'm exaggerating a bit there, but I think that does look exactly like a 911 at the front. It's even got the, the 911 sort of looking rear end, and then they've sort of managed to squeeze in an extra door there on the side of the car. So it's like a long wheelbase 911. By the way, the doors, when you open them, before we talk about the interior, um, they've got like these hydraulic bars there. So when you open them, just such a quality feel to opening that door. Like that bar there, bit of effort made there, maybe a bit, bit over the top, uh, but it was well worth it. I was about to show you the rear of the car. Before we do that, let's just quickly wander around to the rear. Something else a Panamera GTS has got over a normal Panamera is this rear spoiler. Let me just jump in, press the button uh, that operates that spoiler and show you lot the magic that Porsche done with the spoiler on this car. Ignition on, petrol shock. <laughs> this button here, there she goes, wow. What a feature that is. So uh, yeah, if you want to stand out over your, your usual Panamera, you can just stick your spoiler up at the back. So it'll come up automatically, but if you want to, you can manually operate it with that button in there. So let's close that back down now. Them doors, I love that feature on them doors. Oh, by the way, before we close that door, let's gently close the door and just demonstrate another little feature. It's got soft closed, go soft closed doors. How cool is that? So uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier that the uh, facelifts have got darker rear lights. Anything else worth talking about at the rear? I'm genuinely excited about that rear spoiler. I, I think it's such a cool feature. Four exhausts at the rear, which looks really good. Uh, but visually, other than that, what else has the GTS got? It's got a couple of GTS badges here and there. Uh, door seals there. Ignore the paper mat, the, the valuators. Big shout out to the Binker valuators. They have just um, shampooed the driver's floor mat. So it's wet and they put me a little paper mat in there for the time being. Steering wheel, should we talk about the front? Let's just talk about, let's go back to the rear. Back to the rear. The two seats in the rear, so super comfortable. So this car passes as a, um, a sports car, a practical car, a daily car, and also a chauffeur car. Look at that, if you, you could literally pick up celebrities in the back of this. It's even got little heated seats button. Heated seat buttons in the rear as well. And the carbon fiber, have I even mentioned that? Is that even carbon fiber? I would say that's carbon fibre. It is carbon fibre. It is the neatest carbon fibre I've ever seen. And that goes through the door cards, through the centre of the dash. There's that big panel there on the dash as well. Look at that. Very, very nice. Through into the rear. 
and then the whole centre col column as well. Look, round by the gear stick, through here, all the way to there. You've got carbon fibre there as well. And hold on, what's this little thing here? So many features. Look at that. You've got a little power socket there as well. Look at that. Amazing cigarette lighter. Yeah. Don't want to be smoking it. You do not want to be smoking this car. Even that is a feature. Look at how nice does that open. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, should we show you the rear? I may as well show you the rear, and I? Yeah. Boot button there. <laughs> I'm trying to cover as much as I can because I know Panamera buyers are going to want to see all of this. Good size boot. It's also got um, a blind thing there as well, which you can clip on to the boot lid. So when you close the boot lid, it covers up all your luggage in the back as well, which is pretty cool. Close that door gently. Has it got soft clothes on the rear as well? I would assume so. Yes, it does. Lovely jubbly. On the interior, back in on the interior, the shape of them seats is wonderful. It's got little Porsche emblems in the headrest there as well, which is cool. Nice big bold armrest with a cup holder conveniently like in the, the most perfect position there. Very well located if we jump in. GGS badge is on the dials there, one in the center and one on the screen to the right there. And just like, what a nice place to be this is. Something else it's got is an Alcantara headlining, which I'm not sure if that came standard in the GTSs. We'll find out shortly when we go through the spec list. In fact, I think we'll do that now because we've still got to go through the spec list. We've then got to do a car vertical check to see how much, see if, see if there's any bad history. Is the camera playing up? It's all right now. It's awake. Um, it's done 71,000 miles as well, by the way. It's something worth mentioning. Uh, but I think the thing that I want to really focus on with this video is just the sheer quality of this car. This is a 2014 car, so it's quite old, really really like eight nine years old now and um, it's just such a nice place to be this steering wheel which I've begun to talk about earlier but I got sidetracked with some other wonderful quality that this car's got uh, this steering wheel is such an amazing feature in this car like this whole interior is beautiful I've probably mentioned the word beautiful 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 so many times in this video because it is beautiful but that steering wheel really, really finishes off the interior of this car. So um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this camera up in the window there. We're gonna go through HPI, go through specs, talk about values as well, because that's something else you're probably quite curious to know about. You're gonna wanna know how much this car's worth today. Have a little guess in your mind now, and I'm gonna talk about that shortly. We're then gonna go through drives. We've got to do draggy times as well. We need to do draggy times, see how it compares uh, from 20 to 70 mile an hour on, compared to all of my other cars on my draggy leaderboard. I reckon it's gonna do in the five some, somewhere five seconds ish maybe low five i don't know we'll find out and something else we need to do is we need to hear it let's just get the camera up in the window get on it <laughs> lovely yeah i've made a right old mess down there i think the boys are gonna have to give it another little scrub after I'm done with it. But something I haven't mentioned yet is the word, well, I have mentioned it, but haven't highlighted enough is the word Porsche, right? So I've mentioned that this is like a daily driving car, sports car with luxury, comfort, you can show for drive someone. It's got all this going for it with performance, all of this wonderful stuff, but it is also a Porsche. So when you park this thing in your driveway or when you're driving it down the road, people are gonna look at it and like, wow, that's a Porsche. And Porsche in the German car world, I say it a lot, I think, I'm not going to say they build the best because that's a bold statement, but they are up there. I think personally, my favourite German car, I suppose you could look at Bentleys and stuff. I don't know, but Porsche, I do feel like they sit in a league of their own. The quality of their cars are just unbelievable. And obviously, I was at the uh, Nürburgring recently and there was like 911 GT3s and GT3 RSs everywhere. Like they were driving them like they were courses or so. I don't know how they affording to buy one is one thing but affording to buy one and take it to the Nürburgring and cane in the arse out of it all day around around that track is like these people got serious money but forget about that uh, that aside them cars are built to do that and I know achieving doing that is what they're supposed to do but that's seriously impressive so Porsche is a brand in my eyes and it's proven time and time again is exceptional. So uh, interior quality, I know I've mentioned it again a lot, like the quality of the leather, it's really good quality leather. Other manufacturers are known to not supply their cars with such good quality leather. Uh, so I think that's really worth pointing out. The quality of just the finish of the whole interior, that gear stick, we've not even mentioned the gearbox yet, it's actually a, a PDK gearbox, which is like a hero in the car world. A really, really good gearbox. And that gear shifter, just, just that gear stick, it's just such a nice looking gear stick. That whole 
whole center console is absolutely beautiful. Also what we've got, which I like to highlight a lot in videos, is we've got physical buttons, right? They've got a nice click to them as well, really nice click. They've got a ridged edge as well on every single button, so you know where you're at. So you're never having to take your focus off the road, like I've mentioned in some of these modern cars where it's just all touch screen, you don't know what you're doing, you've got to look and focus on the screen. In this Porsche, you've literally, you, once you've got the hang of it, you'll know exactly what you're pressing, what you're doing without even looking. So yeah, such a nice interior. Also, quick hashtag key check, because we like to do that on, this vid on these videos, or on my channel even. There we go. Um, Shaped like a Porsche, yeah? What a great idea. Uh, the Alcantara headlining, which I've already mentioned. I think what we need to do right now, is there anything else I wanted to say? The comfort of the seats. They're very firm seats. They're not like, you're not gonna sink into them like you would like, say in a BMW 7 Series or something like that. It's a sports car with luxury and comfort, yeah? Right, let's start the engine, yeah? Because that's another feature. We've also got a sports exhaust button down here, so we'll click that on, start the engine. I think we've got to get the power on first. Key and ignition. I think that key's dead. Let's use the other key. Start again. Two hours later. As soon as I push the key in the ignition, by the way, you have to physically do that. This is not a keyless go car. So from a security point of view, that I would say it's probably quite good. People can't nick your car, program a key on your doorstep. But anyway, um, put the key in the seat, sort of adjust itself as you put it in. By the way, the seats have got the most amount of adjustments to a lot. I've never, look at this button. I've, there's a slider of all the buttons, yeah? Look at the, the button control panel. Look how many buttons there are to adjust the seat. I don't know what they all do. I think it'll take a bit of time to work them all out. But a serious amount of adjustments on them seats. So if you suffer with back pain and you're worried about you need to get, get your seat in the perfect position, don't worry. Panamera has got it covered for you, all right? Let's start the engine. It just sort of bursts into life, doesn't it? You know, when you initially started, it's like, whoa. I'll probably replay it again. Just, <laughs> it sounds so good. And that's just the starting feature, yeah? That's just listening to the sound of it starting. Let's give it a little rev now and show you what it sounds like with a few revs. I've not even driven this car yet, so I am super excited to see what it drives like. I've also not mentioned how this car come about. I'll tell you about that shortly. But before we do that, let's quickly fly, fly through the spec list and then have a look at uh, the car vertical check as well, because I'm not looking forward to that bit, but we'll do it anyway, live on YouTube. Here we go, an RV14 JGY. It's had a plate transfer, uh, so it's had a couple of private plates on it. VA MOA down the bottom there. You, you know, you would, wouldn't you? If you've got a V8 under the bonnet, you want to tell the world you've got a V8 under the bonnet. So that's pretty cool. Five registers are cleared, so it's not stolen. We've got no finance and none of that, which is good. Uh, HPI clear is in not Cat S or none of that either. Uh, Panamera GTS V8 Semi-Auto SA. That's what the SA stands for. Five-door hatch, seven-speed auto, uh, four former keepers in black. I've not even mentioned the black thing. Black wheels, black body. Black window trims, blacked out windows, black rear lights. I love that look. It just looks so bloody cool, doesn't it? 4.8 litre engine, which we know about. And then the wonderful spec. Before we do spec, let's quickly do NMR. Uh, it's not been clocked, none of that. It's 71,000 miles, genuine mileage, MOT details. It's got an MOT until the 11th of October next year, okay? It's Long MOT on it, HPI spec check. This car was 93,390 pounds new, and it has got 13,815 quid's worth of options, right? Click the optional equipment list. The 20 inch Panamera sport wheels painted in gloss black. Uh, they were 2,954 pounds, really? That is, like, they look wonderful, like, they, they look really good. Would I have paid that for them wheels? I, I don't know. I don't know, it's hard to say without being in the position where you're specking your brand new Porsche Panamera GTS. I don't know what, I can't imagine what that feels like, let alone spending nearly three grand on a set of wheels. But LED main headlights in black, including Porsche dynamic light system. So it's apparently got the, um, the adaptive headlights as well, which is wicked. That's 2,116 pounds. Roof line in, in Alcantara, that was a spec option then. Um, I thought that might have come standard on GTSs, but no, that was 1,360 quid. Uh, so a lot of money, but I love that. And to be fair, if you were to get that done aftermarket, you wouldn't get it done for 1360 quid. So that ain't bad at all. Um, park assist system, front and rear, including reversing camera and surround view. So I did notice it's got a little camera on the front bumper, uh, just below the grill. 
that's pretty cool carbon interior package a thousand one thousand one hundred nine pounds by the way the parking assist was twelve hundred seventy one pounds both surround sound system 825 quid wow i would say that's quite important you know you're driving down the road you're enjoying your porsche you want to enjoy your tunes you can only really enjoy your tunes if you've got good speakers so both do a wonderful job of that so i'd have to, i would have them for 825 quid personally sports design side skirts no way i didn't even notice that 660 pounds i would say it's worth worth um having the sports chrono package which i'm not certain but i think it might come with uh, or consist of the steering wheel and the clock on the dash not certain don't quote me on that pretty sure it is though 542 quid either way that steering wheel and that clock beautiful beautiful stuff the word beautiful props to mind again led extend, extended interior lighting package uh 502 pounds not sure that is but one thing i do want to point out is the interior light even that is a cool feature like it's just a subtle light but it's quite a nice um shape and it's sort of surrounded by that lovely Alcantara material as well, so yeah, I like the interior light. Uh, soft closed doors, £477. Wow, is that even necessary? I just think that's just something you take for granted. Do you even need that? I just music on. <laughs> I just sort of use it because I can. I suppose that's what the is that what the hydraulics are on the on the hinges for? Possibly, maybe they're they're a part of the soft opening and closing feature i don't know but 477 quid i suppose uh privacy glass 356 pounds led rear lights tinted in black 344 pounds seat heat in front and rear 332 pounds porsche crest embossed uh front and rear headrests they charge you for them head uh, them crests in the headrests uh they are 275 pounds very nice so i'll give it that very very nice um I don't know if I own Porsche. Do you know what? I can't. They do a bit. Oh, who am I? Who am I? Amazing. Two hundred seventy-five pounds. Yes, please. Driver memory function. Two hundred forty-seven pounds. I think this is just longest spec list I've ever seen in my life. Monochrome black exterior package in high gloss. Two hundred thirty-five quid. So we've got black touches on the exterior. Universal audio interface. Universal audio interface. I don't know, but I can tell you that the audio interface is touch screen, yeah? So you, you have the ability to touch screen. If you wish, you've also got manual buttons, which I mentioned earlier. Basalt, ba black metallic, that's the bodywork, and black standard leather interior. So black interior, black exterior, all looks really, really good. Total price, 13,815 pound. Now, now, we're gonna do the, the car vehicle check, yeah? Let's do it. There we go, so Porsche Panamera, it's got the VIN number on there as well. Um, the mileage is good, yeah. The theft is good, it's not, it's not stolen, that's handy. Uh, accidents, not been any accidents, and it's not got no finance on it. And the good thing about Car Vertical is they show you a whole timeline from one to the wherever you are in time in the car, and it shows you every single visit this car's had, maintenance, MOTs, all that sort of stuff. Highlights the um, the advisories on the MOTs as well, previous plates there, just gives you a whole timeline of where the car's been, what it's been up to throughout its whole life. And if you scroll past that, it then give you the list of uh, other stuff that it checks to show that there's no records found for uh, outstanding finance, driving school car, police vehicle, none of that. It's always good to know that kind of stuff as well. Uh, it's not been seized either, which is brilliant. Uh, stolen vehicle checks, checks in various countries, not just in the UK. And then you scroll past that and there's a graph there that shows the mileage and it shows it's all consistent. Uh, if you go back down the graph, keep going, keep going. It's all good, it's all good. Oh, and then suddenly that sh shows there that it, at one point in time it showed nine miles. <laughs> so it went from uh, 14 to 3,000 to 8,000 and then it sort of went up to nearly 20,000 but in that time it went down to nine that would just you'd then in a, an event like this you'd assume that a car's been clocked but you can clearly see that is just a mistake so what I would do in a situation like this is just double check with car vertical and HPI double check mileage has got a green tick there and then if we go back to HPI you'll see as well uh, just do a check with them. The NMR National Mileage Register is all clear as well. So moving on from that, it does a, does a whole list of mileage checks. So it's all got green ticks as well, which is wonderful. Uh, damage, obviously we know it's not been damaged anywhere. Like the the, the extent 
that car vertical go to. I do do HPIs a lot, but they are very basic. Car vertical just go to a whole new level with checking your car. And if you want to check your own car, I will put a link to them in the description below. Use my code CCD at checkout and you'll get a little discount on your check as well. I would highly recommend, even if you just do it on your own car, just go and do it on your own car. Just get a bit of background on your own car, then you know where you're at. Uh, valuation as well, that's also a very interesting thing to do. The pro approximate market value of this vehicle today is uh, 30,789, but when the seller's a company, i.e. us, uh, so a retail valuation would be 33,689 pounds. So that'll give you an idea uh, what what it's worth today, all right? Price after negotiations and stuff, that's pretty similar mean pretty similar meaning and then it's got a few um spec checks as well below that all right so i think that's pretty much it that is like an all-in-one check i know this whole section of the video has been going on a long time there is so much to be said for checking cars in detail and also there's so much to be sped, said for the spec of this car let's now hit the road guys the, the engine is warm might need a little bit of fuel. I think there's enough in there. Uh, I still want to see what this thing drives like, and I do also want to do draggy time. So let's get out. Quick change of subject. If you look at this car vertical check on a different Panamera, you'll see that it was previously damaged. And if you click photos, you can see all the photos of the damage that it had when it had the accident. This is why I highly recommend that you do your checks because you never know what you're buying. Listen to that. Listen to that downshift. I've got it in uh, manual mode. <laughs> this gearbox is exceptional. Like, unbelievable. Listen to them downshifts. I suppose the, the downfall with not having turbos is you don't get the ability to tune your car. The turbo, uh, the Panamera turbo is about 60 more horsepower than the, the GTS. Uh, but the beauty of a naturally aspirated engine is you get that lovely, naturally aspirated sound. Listen to that induction roar. Sounds unbelievable. Uh, it is four wheel drive as well, by the way, so traction is not an issue. Obviously being a, uh, a two ton, listen to that. That is barking. It is literally barking. Oh, was this the spoiler up at the rear? <laughs> it is. The bumpy roads ain't too bad at all. Like, don't get me wrong, it's bumpy, but for those that are familiar with my channel will know that this ain't too bad for the bumpy road at all. It's coping with it really, really well. Now, I've not yet told you how this car come about. Uh, a customer actually asked us to source him a car. So a customer who's like a friend, does a bit of work for us. And he asked, he specifically wanted a Porsche Panamera GTS. We found him the dream car and um, he just decided he didn't want it. So I was like, do you know what? I still want to buy that car. So we bought it as a bit of stock. He's actually bought a Range Rover off of us. So he decided he, I don't know, he had a change of heart. I don't, don't know what the reason was, but um, it does mean that we have just sold a Range Rover and we've now got a nice Panamera GTS in stock, which I am so pleased to report. So I don't know if it was, would be a car that I'd ever come across because they are super rare. Currently on Auto Trader, there isn't many at all. I think the cheapest one on the net um, if you want a facelift Panamera, the cheapest one available currently is £32,000. Uh, so they start at 32 grand. That car vertical check was absolutely spot on. And um, yeah, they're a lot of car for the money. I wouldn't have a clue what demand is like, because like I say, I've never had one before. I've got no idea, but we will soon find out. One thing I can say, it is just, it's a special car, isn't it? It's a very special car. He's got his fishing gear, he's well happy. Ready for the weekend with his fishing gear. It's warm, I'm warm, I'm very warm. Just work out to do the heating. So all these nice heaters, but I might just get a heated seat on, even though I'm boiling hot, I just love having heated seats on. Get the window down a little bit, which might help us enjoy that sound a bit more. Let's have a little listen. Oh my God. Something I've mentioned briefly, or quite strongly actually, is the steering wheel, yeah? Very nice steering wheel, but one thing, one part of the steering wheel that I've not mentioned at all yet is the paddles. They are such, they're just such nice paddles, man. Look at them shifts. Combine that gearbox with them paddles and the, even the visuals of that gear stick and these paddles and that steering, this car. There's a, the, the, um, the Kia Stinger GTS that I saw the other day that I put on my Instagram a few weeks ago, KS11 GTS. What a plate for a King of Stinger GTS. But forget about that, because for this, for this kind of money, for that kind of money even, you can get yourself 
a Porsche Panamera GTS. Listen to it. Right, let's um, just cut to the Dragon Scene section of the video. We're gonna do three runs, but we're only gonna do one run on camera because this video's gone on for long enough. We need to do one run, let's see how quickly it does 20 to 70 mile an hour, and then we'll pull over and compare it, uh, compare its time to all of the other cars on my Draggy leaderboard. I've got over 100 cars on my leaderboard now, so we're gonna find out exactly how this compares to some of the cars uh, shortly, all right? Right, ready, three, two, one. What? Sports mode on. Traction control off. It just pinged off the line there. <laughs> do you see how quick that was? Wow. Um, I'm gonna do two more runs off cam. Oh wow, just looked at the time. Yeah. <laughs> what a car. Let's flick that back over to auto. Do the window up. So, <laughs> the time. So I kind of expected it would do in the fives. I'll, I'll be honest, the reason why I expected it would do in the fives, yeah? because I just expected it would be a bit of a fat, lazy car. Sometimes when you drive a naturally aspirated V8, it just doesn't perform like you'd expect it would. But this car has just exceeded my expectations. So run number one, yeah? It done it in 4.64 seconds. That is an incredible time for a two-ton car. That puts it pretty much next to uh, Saks Mark V uh, Toyota Supra that I've done a video on recently, right? That is unbelievable. That car there is a seriously quick car, um, and this is just pretty much match, matched at on run number one. I then done a couple more, and the fastest run that I've done of the lot was 4.39 seconds, so I bettered it from there, 4.39 seconds, and if you look at the draggy leaderboard now, that puts it bang in the middle of the saloon and the coupe W204 C63 AMGs. They, them, cars, they, them cars weigh less than this, and they've also got a 450 similar powered uh, V8 naturally aspirated engine under the bonnet. For you to be in a Panamera, which let's face it, it's, it's a funny looking thing. It ain't the most attractive thing. It ain't, it ain't really, its purpose isn't a sports car. It's meant to, probably meant to appeal to the, the older gentleman who wants a bit of a performance car. Yeah, you and your Asbo C63 AMG. You ain't getting away from the, the mature gentleman in his Panamera GCS, because He's gonna be right next to you on a road legal race. Is there such a thing as a road legal race? On a road legal uh, comparable um, drive uh, to, 20, to, to 70 mile an hour. So yeah, credit to the Panamera GTS. One of the best cars I've driven, like all round packages I've driven for a long, this, did you just see what happened there? That was a downshift. I thought a dog was barking at me. I'm currently in auto mode. Let me just highlight that quickly. The gearbox is an incredible feature on this car. And when you slow down, yeah, slow down, undo the window. The downshifts, it's doing that for you. It's a real fierce burst of the throttle pedal as it shifts down. Let's do it again. <laughs> I've got so much so many compliments for this car. It's such a good car. It's basically a Porsche Panamera Turbo without the turbos, yeah? What else can I say? If anyone's thinking about buying one um, at any point in time, obviously this video is gonna be on YouTube forever. If anyone watches this video in 10 years time, five years time, 15 years, whatever, and you're thinking about buying one, to go and get yourself in the driver's seat. Honestly, I think, like, I would never, I would never have even looked at these cars. I've overlooked them myself. And I'm a car trader, I'm buying these sorts of cars all the time. Put me in the driver's seat in this car today, and I am shocked, all right? So bloody impressed. Go and get yourself in the driver's seat. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you liked this video. I will link Car Vertical in the description below. Uh, so many people ask me, Cal, who do you use for your car checks? I use a HPI trade platform. I've now begun using Car Vertical because I think they're brilliant. They do such a good job. Um, and the HPI trade platform, that's not actually available to the public. So Car Vertical have reached out. I've done a few bits of them now. Uh, they're a brilliant company. I've, I've built up a bit of a relationship with them and they do a very, very good job. So I will link them in the description below along with my uh, discount code CCD. Click them, get yourself a check. It supports the channel, supports the videos, and it supports Car Vertical as well. And forget about that. Forget supporting people. Do it for yourself, yeah? They're wicked checks. Find out about your car, hit the link, all right? Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you're new. There's a the Porsche there, look, Porsche life. My mate, my Porsche mate. Um, hit subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.